Hello and welcome to XLOOKUP ERRORS. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I was recently asked the following question. Can you show XLOOKUP in detail because we encounter errors with our data? So we'll dig into XLOOKUP in this video. Exercise one. So the first common error I'd like to talk about is related to the data type, text versus numbers. For example, equals XLOOKUP. We wanna go find this invoice number, comma, in this invoice number column, comma, and we want to return the amount. We close the function and hit enter and we get an error. And so it's like, what's going on? And it's like, oh, maybe there's no 1022. And we scan down and sure enough, we see there's a 1022. So what's going on? Is Excel broken? Did I write the formula wrong? Like what's going on? And the issue is simply one of data types. In other words, we're trying to ask Excel to go find this number 1022 in this range of text values that represent numbers. In other words, this is being stored as a text value. This is being stored as a number. To the XLOOKUP function, equivalent values when stored as different data types don't match. That's why we're getting the error. So one option to fix this is to simply take the time to manually convert these text values into numbers, and that would be just fine. But I wanna show another option where we just modify our formula. Instead of looking in the range of B13 to B20, we're gonna wrap the value function around that range. And what this causes Excel to do is to first convert these text strings into numeric values. Enter, and that worked. 564, 1022, 564. Let's do another one, 1027. That looks good, and 1034, and that looks good. So by wrapping the value function around the range, it first converts those text strings into numbers, and that enables XLOOKUP to make the match. Let's look at another common issue when using XLOOKUP. Exercise two. Let's start with equals XLOOKUP. We wanna go find this, comma, in here, comma, and we wanna return the matching amount. Close function and enter. 564. Let's see if it worked. 1022, 564, that looks good, but wait a second. There are multiple matches. So like, what's the deal? Well, <laughs> here's the deal. With Excel's lookup functions, like XLOOKUP, it stops at the first match and returns its result, and then it doesn't look at the remaining range. In other words, it just stops when it finds its first match. And in some cases, this is just what we want. But in other cases, we may want to return the last matching value or we may want to return all of the matching values. So let's investigate. By default, the XLOOKUP function will return the first matching value that it finds, but we can modify the formula if we want to return the last matching value within the range. To do so, we edit the formula and we go to the search mode argument. And here we can say search last to first and enter. And now we get 1083. So out of all the 1022s, the last one is 1083, and that's what it's returning. So if we leave this out, or if we type a one, it's gonna return the first matching value. If instead we use a minus one, then it's gonna basically start from the bottom and look up and find the first result. So built into XLOOKUP, we can easily find the first match when there are multiple matches. We can easily find the last match when there are multiple matches. But what if we wanna return all of the matching values? Well, that takes us to the next exercise, exercise three. If we wanna return all the matches, we'll need to use something other than XLOOKUP. For example, one option would be the filter function. Another option might be the sumifs function, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the filter function, but I have tons of videos available on the sumifs function. Equals filter. The first argument is the array. That simply is the range that has the values we want to return, comma. And then the second argument is the include expression. We only wanna include those rows where the invoice is equal to our invoice number close function and enter. And now we can see there are two results returned, 400 and 1088, let's just double check. 1034, 1034, 400, 1088, that looks good. Let's try 1010 and we get 443 and 943 and that looks good. So as you can see, the filter function returns all of the matches, but what if we wanted to aggregate these values? In other words, what if we wanted to try to find the sum, min, or max? No problem. All we need to do is wrap the desired aggregate function around the filter function. For example, equals sum of the results of the filter function. Enter. And now we get 1386, which is the sum of our two 1010 rows. Let's go with 1022, and we get 2499, and that looks right. And let's look at 1034. 
we get 1488 and that looks right. And we can just as easily find the largest or max value within the filtered results. So that's the largest 1034 amount. And we can just as easily find the lowest or minimum value as well. And so those are a couple of ways to address common X lookup issues. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.